grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today, we're, we're continuing a sermon series that, that we started last week uh, What that's called um, Tackling Number 21. Number 21 is supposed to be the 21st century. So we're taking on uh, tough topics. They're not easy to find solutions, but we're not afraid because we have Jesus as our Savior, so we can tackle all kinds of tough topics. And today, we are tackling technology. As Laura Lee was telling us, technology is a wonderful thing. It's a, it's a good gift, but technology brings some problems with it, some pitfalls too. Now, in the last um, 50 years, uh, computers and the internet have, have they've transformed the world. And now, of course, we have smartphones, which I'm using right now to switch slides. Uh, but smartphones, not only can we watch practically anything, play just about everything, and learn almost anything, we can do all those things. We can learn, we can play, we can watch almost anywhere, um, which is massively very different from what our world used to be. Um, and when you stop and think about that, that's, that's really good, but it can also be really dangerous. And that's why we read, uh, our first reading was from Genesis and the Tower of Babel from Genesis 11. Now in that story, people come together and they build something really impressive and amazing the Tower of Babel, though it, it wasn't just a tall building, it was a symbol of man's greatness, of his glory. But as we heard that story, we heard that God confused the languages of the builders, and halfway through, the building stops. Now, why would God do that? Well, I think the simple answer is that sometimes we need Boundaries. God needs to stop us from going too far. And God did this, in this case, to teach us that just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do something. And the Tower of Babel kind of reminds us that there's a lot of things that can tear us apart, like pride, or in this case, the, in the case of the Tower of Babel, miscommunication, different languages, people went in different ways. But as Christians, the, the, what good news that Jesus is the one who brings us together. And it doesn't matter what our language is because Jesus uh, gives us forgiveness. He makes us one people in Christ. Um, of course, it's not only the Tower of Babel. Human beings, we kind of have a history of building amazing things and sometimes we don't think about all the consequences. For instance, think of the pharaohs and the pyramids. They built these great monuments, but they didn't care about the welfare of their workers. Empires are often built on the backs of soldiers. Hollywood, a little more relevant. Hollywood produces great entertainment. But we see, I mean, just this past week, I saw several news stories about actors and actresses who had overdosed. Um, Hollywood produces these great things, but looking at the people in Hollywood, I'm not sure it makes all their lives that much better. Um, there can be casualties, even when we do great things. Um, the Tower of Babel is one warning from God but we, that, that we need boundaries. Uh, boundaries are necessary. And for instance, we see other examples of that. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us, be careful what you look at. Be careful what you watch. Because he says, if we see darkness, uh, including you know, garbage on our computers or tablets or smartphones, it's like we're piling garbage on, into our, or onto our, our hearts and minds. So Jesus tells us to be careful what we see. And Jesus also promises us, our children's message was a reminder, that our real treasure, our eternal treasure, is in our Lord, not in money or power or entertainment. 1 Corinthians gave us yet another boundary. Now, 
this is an interesting story. Um, some, some Christians in the church of Corinth were asking whether or not they should eat meat that had been sacrificed to idols. Now, in, in Rome and in Corinth, there were lots of temples to other gods, to false gods, we would call them. And often people would go and they would worship and they would bring some sacrifices, some meat to the god or goddess, and, and then uh, they would eat some of that meat too. I mean, it's not that dissimilar. We're having church and then we're going to share a meal together, a little bit similar. They thought that they were sharing a meal with Zeus or Athena. Again, it's not that different from us. We often pray, come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Uh, that's what a prayer we say. We're inviting Jesus to eat with us. We're Jesus is going to be fellowshipping with us when we're eating lunch down, for those who want to stick around for that um, after service. Um, but here were, here's where the problem came. There was leftover meat from these sacrifices to other gods, and Christians in Corinth were asking, should we eat this meat? Because, here's the kicker, it was on sale, which would immediately get my attention. The meat was cheap. And so Christians said, can we buy it? And uh, Paul says... Um, the Corinthians, he, he tells the Corinthians, you're asking the wrong kind of question. Um, yes, they can eat the meat, Paul says, but if eating the meat were to cause fellow Christians to stumble in their faith, he says, then don't eat it. As Christians, uh, God calls us to no longer just think about ourselves. The most important question is not, what's good for me? No, we try as Christians to care for others, even when we don't have to. And, and the best question a Christian could ask themselves um, would be, how can I be faithful and encourage other people to be faithful at the same time? And I think I bring all that up because that's, the right way for us to approach technology, too. It's not always the way we naturally approach like things like our smartphone, but it's a good way to think about it. Um, uh, it's not, it shouldn't be, how much can I use, or can I watch this? Those are maybe important questions, but they're not the most important question. The best approach is, how can I honor my savior and love my neighbor now that I have a smartphone? How can I use this? Um, to God's glory. The, and, and again, the point is not just to have the right rules, but it's really to be asking for God's Holy Spirit to, to change our hearts um, and to be willing to listen to God uh, about how we use anything in our life, including technology. Now, having said that, of, of course, the truth is, is that we're, we as sinners, we need boundaries. Um, and the reality is there are not many boundaries at all around the internet uh, or smartphones. There's like no boundaries practically. Even lawyers and governments are talking about this and, and they recognize um, the need for additional boundaries around these things. So it's important, I think, as we think, we all, almost all of us use smartphones, right? Almost, almost all of us have computers, we use these things. Um, so is, is technology good or is it bad? Or maybe it's just a tool. That's kind of, I think, the answer most of us come down on. It's a tool. But it's important to, don't forget about this one thing. It's a tool, but remember or think about who the tool is being used on, right? You use a hammer to hammer something. Who is the technology being used on? Now, we usually think about um, the internet, like it's a tool that we use, right? We use the internet, um, but, and that's true, but companies and individuals and leaders, they see, I promise you, they see the internet as a tool they can use on you. Um, your, your smartphone, your TV, your tablet, even, even radio programs or podcasts, Part of their design is to sell us more stuff. They're designed to get you, that, that is how, again, go, I promise you, that is how they are designed to work, to get you to be addicted to, to something that you're going to buy, 
It could be anything. It, it doesn't really matter what it is. They just want you to buy more stuff. It could be uh, or be addicted to something where you need it. Um, it could be sports. It could be sex. It could be Twitter. It could be shopping. It could be anything. The, but the, the, the truth that is helpful to remember is that businesses and bots you know, alike are constantly trying to figure out who you are so the better they know you, they know what they can sell you. Um, and it's, it's healthy to remember that we don't just use the internet, but other people are seeking to use, just like anything else, just like commercials or anything else, um, inter business leaders, other leaders, politicians, are all using the internet to, um, for their, on us, for their purposes. And I think that's important to remember. Uh, it's so important, and maybe it's good to start with kids. When it comes to kids, uh, parents, or guardians, uh, we are there to help guide children, to help them learn how to, to use things, including technology in, in a healthy way. And, uh, you know, it's maybe most obvious in kids, but I think it's just as true for adults. But pretty much every kid, uh, doctor or specialist says giving kids too much screen time is not really healthy for their brains or bodies. Now I'm a parent and I've given my kids, I've let my kids watch TV and use technology before and sometimes it's a nice tool to have. But like I say, pretty much every expert agrees there need to be some limits. Um, and uh, I think if we're taking care of children, uh, we have to assume that we're the only ones giving them boundaries because uh, you might be. <laughs> you might be the only one giving them boundaries. Uh, so, um, so there's there's some of the dangerous part of technology. I'm not saying technology or smartphones are bad, but it's worth starting with, I'd say it's just worth having talking about, having a conversation or thinking about. Um, uh, we also, uh, sometimes Laura Lee and I were talking and she brought up this. Sometimes we use technology to avoid conversations or people. Or maybe we don't intentionally use it to do that, but it happens anyway. We get, um, we're so, sometimes so connected to the internet, right, that we fail to connect to fellow human beings. I bet almost everybody, I bet everybody who has a smartphone is guilty of that at some point, right? We're so connected that we forget to connect to the people around us. Um, and that's why uh, we're talking about our, our sermon series. Our topic is tackling the internet. We could also, or tackling technology. We might also label it intercepting the internet, cutting off the internet at times. Uh, not entirely, but uh, uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes we just have to put the phone down and move around. Um, but, uh, Thinking uh, about technology, I don't know about you, but when I think about technology, it can be overwhelming. Or when I think about, think about it and I think about my kids, I can feel guilty. You know? Or the way that I've misused it, I feel, I feel guilty because I know that I haven't always watched it as closely as I could, or uh, I haven't always used it as responsibly as I should have. It's, it's tough. It's hard to, to deal with. It's good, but it's also hard. Uh, to deal with technology, and it's hard to do this on our own, which to me is a sign that we, if it's hard, we need help. If you, if it's something is hard for you to do, what do you normally do? If something's really hard for you to do, you ask somebody to help you with it. Um, uh, and maybe that's what we should do when it comes to using uh, technology. We should talk to one another, ask each other, ha have a conversation uh, um, about, all right, well, here's how technology, here, here I've been using my smartphone, um, how, what do you think of when I use it? Uh, maybe talking to your, to your spouse or to friends, um, and not just talking about how wonderful it is, although it's not bad, but how can we use it in a good way? Or when does it become a problem? When does my smartphone start to become a problem for me? Uh, it can be, uh, and, and I think it actually can be a wonderful thing when we feel overwhelmed or guilty, when we feel that way because then when we feel guilty or overwhelmed, 
sometimes that's when we're more ready for God or Christ to transform our lives. Um, If you think that you have something completely under control, you're not very likely to ask for help, right? But, But tough challenges teach us to seek God and and to ask for his forgiveness and to ask for his help. As I said, I I imagine all of us who have a smartphone have um, at times spent too much time plugged in and connected to the internet and not connected to people around us. In other words, we all, we all need forgiveness. We all are imperfect. We all need God's help and forgiveness. Um, And the good news is that Jesus gives it to us. Whenever we need forgiveness, we don't have to worry about what Jesus is going to say. He always tells us, your sins are forgiven. We know that we have a Savior who loves us and forgives us. And Jesus takes our our guilt and and our shame and he nails it to the cross. So we have a clean slate. Any and every time we come to him, he forgives us. So, So I want to spend the last time, how can we tackle technology Going forward now, well, as I said, for starters, it's, it's good to, re- to admit we've made mistakes, to repent, and to be ready to listen to God for help. Um, and I think it's really helpful when we're humble and honest. Um, that's when we can take on a lot of challenges. For instance, humility and honesty can help both us and others when Christians tackle the uh, technology. So. I guess I'd encourage everybody to let's help each other out. Let's talk about technology a little bit. And maybe maybe even this week, sit down and talk about um, how we can best use um, the internet or smartphones. How can it be a positive tool uh, in your life? Um, What are some ways in which it potentially can be dangerous or or not helpful? Um, And how would you like to use it? How might you use it? And to help you grow in your faith, um, if if you're um, and perhaps if you're not used to using technology, that's another great reason to talk. If you have some, I, I bet there's a way that we could help each other out. Maybe we can do something more organized. Maybe we could I don't know have a, a class about it. Or I'm certainly happy to try to help and connect anybody who's interested to resources um, because it's one thing to say well we need to be careful how we use it, but it's another thing to actually go do it and. Uh, we got to, again, I don't think it's, it's, it's not just a one person fixes everything. I think we, as a church, we come together and help each other out as we talk about these. Um, these uh, these um, devices uh, and this technology can, can certainly be a tool that we use positively. I imagine that all of us could think of real positive ways it's, it's helped us in our lives. Um, but we might ask um, uh, the question, maybe not WWJD, WWJT. <laughs> maybe that's not quite it, but what would Jesus tweet? Uh, um, it, but just using the technology, as, it's not something separate from the rest of our life, um, but as part of our life. And, and we've tried to do some things, for instance, that we updated, we posted some things on Facebook this week, and we updated our website um, with some more resources uh, to help you. And, and I put in the, the bulletin, anybody, it's a, just a little simple exercise that might help you. It's completely optional. But I have a question in there you could answer. Check, check the one that you're most interested in. I gave you three options. Maybe you could use the internet to find a good devotion. Again, Pratt, we've got some on our Grace uh, website. Or maybe you could watch a, a, a Bible episode that talks about, uh, like, I, you know, we've got mine as your, your floor, but there's better out there, Bible 360s, or all kinds of good resources out there where you could learn about something about the faith that you're, maybe you're, you're not sure about, um, or you're interested in, or um, you could listen to a Christian Bible study. I Sometimes I really like some podcasts that I can, while I'm doing some chores, I can listen to a Christian podcast um, or Bible study. You know, so we're, we're kind of back at square one. Yes, the internet really is, it's a tool. Um, but as we recognize that we're human beings, um, we, we recognize that we, we need to have some boundaries around that. Um, and we also are reminded one, in one more way that we really need God's forgiveness and we need his help. 
And, and the good news is he is more than happy to forgive and help us. And, and in the case it's going to be for all the things we talk about, we don't have to face these challenges alone. Um, let's tackle these problems together. And let's uh, be willing to, to listen to one another and to talk to one another and uh, to help each other out. Because with Christ's forgiveness and his guidance and even his church, we can tackle technology. In Jesus' name, amen.